and gentlemen, the American Jury and Bulldog Nation, welcome to Eric Dieter's Local News. As always, we're sponsored by Dieter's Consulting, Parks Yoga. Check us out on all of our platforms. Well, the lead story's got to be this. Mixon was found not guilty. Sounds to me like it was an easy decision for the judge. That judge decided that he was not guilty of aggravated menacing. Bottom line was scaring the hell out of somebody with a, with a firearm. Seems to me like there wasn't any really real proof that he had a firearm. You know, why the prosecutors brought this case, I don't know. Uh, if you know, originally he was not charged, and then they were brought up later, so they get, gained more evidence against him. Um, however, I do believe that uh, this was not a case that, um, uh, how should I say this, was a big deal, like needed to get the conviction. I think what they feel like is that, hey, nobody can ever accuse them of not charging him because he's a Bengal football player. The Bengals released a statement quick right out of the gate, saying they glad to put it behind him and let's go on. So the NFL must not be interested in this either, considering the result. Bottom line is we need all hands on deck. You know, Mixon has a troubled past back in college days, but you know what? Don't we all? And people change. I think Mixon has done pretty damn well here in Cincinnati. And you know what? The reality is, is there's always going to be somebody around your area that might screw up. And we can't always lay that blame on person involved. Wrong crime, Dr. Gupta. Uh, Rob Sanders apparently is looking at this doctor's office uh, for possible criminal charges. Uh, a woman who wanted to sue him actually came to see us. They're being represented by somebody else. And um, we decided not to take the case. Just so you know, if any of you all have uh, treatment from Dr. Gupta, the issue is, is that there was a physician assistant without a license to administer some of the drugs. Uh, a lot of it's in dispute, but that's the crux of this case. In local news, gonna promote the Black Reunion again this weekend. We did earlier this week, but it's a big thing going on. And there you have it. By the way, you know, when you think about Cincinnati, um, our, little, our little city, you know what? It might be the best place in America to live. <laughs> I mean, when you think about what all we get, big city, but we're not a big city with all the traffic problems, especially those of us that live in Northern Kentucky. I mean, I, I find it hard, unless you can find a place where you can look at a mountain every day or an ocean every day, I don't know how you beat it. But the bottom line is, this weekend, you've got the, that, you've got the Reds playing. You got everything, there's always something cool going on in Cincinnati. High school football's back. I'm not gonna give you all of the, uh, we're, we're covering it in our sports show. Remember our sports show on uh, Sunday night, um, Sports About Boundaries. I'm not going to tell you who's playing who because you already know that. You can find it on your phone. Purpose of this is to let all of you all know that high school football is back this weekend so you can check out your high school games. Since the FBI, they say that they're very aware of what's going on with the drug and the border issues and all that, and they're on top of it. You know what? My guess is the Cincinnati FBI guys are good guys. The problem is the ones in D.C. aren't. The Big Edgewood House. You know what? I've decided to put this on the news because anybody who drives down Turkey Foot Road sees this house. I'm going to make a few comments about it. You see, ever see this house when you drive down Turkey Foot Road, Sabrina? No. It is a gigantic, beautiful home, lake, bridge, all that stuff. It's, gotten, it's been listed now for $6.9 million is all it takes. Now, this picture kind of is a little unfair. Here's why I think they might have a little problem selling the house for what they asked for. This guy built this house. I think he was a hedge funder from New York or something. Like, was in Cincinnati, or like this area some. Everybody thought it was Joey Votto's house for a while. They built this house right in the middle of middle-class subdivision. In other words, it's not a triple crown. It's in a middle-class subdivision. And I think somebody's going to say, you know, snobby kind of people that would buy that house would say, not everybody's rich as snobs, but a lot of them are. They're going to say, man, I don't want to buy that house. It's too near those Meadowlark residents. <laughs> I used to play flag football right there. Uh, not flag football, tackle football in high school right there. True story. All right, in Kentucky news, the Kentucky Supreme Court is considering whether or not you can file a, a, a claim against the state of Kentucky or one of its agencies in any county in the state. In my personal opinion, you shouldn't be able to file it in any county, but 
if the subject matter of that issue is in your county or whatever county, yes. Here's the problem, folks. They make you file anything concerning the state in Franklin County, Frankfurt. Guess what? You got big time Democratic circuit judges. So the cards are stacked against you if you're a Republican. A uh, drug czar. By the way, you've heard me say this before. I hate the word czar. You know, czar is Russian for Caesar. And we start calling him czar. So the word itself is stupid. And then they create the position. Why do you need a drug czar when you have DEA, FBI, etc.? <laughs> Mitch McConnell showed up, though. He, he, Southeastern Kentucky, he showed up to be part of the whole thing. Absolutely. Coleman Mills, Ballotpedia have added both of them. The woman on the left is Bashir's running mate. The old fart on the right. I'm just joking. Bobby Mills is, is Daniel Cameron's running mate. You know what? I could think of about 10 different people that Daniel, by the way, I'm for Cameron, but I could think about 10 different people that he should have picked other than Robbie Mills for his running mate that add some energy, some pizzazz, and some action. But that's not the campaign they're going to run, which is all right. They can run that boring McConnell campaign, and I hope it's enough. This is the Bulldog. Every dog has their day. You have a great weekend.